Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel, Caribbean Hot Topics. Now, I know it has been a very long time since I posted a video. And some of you are probably wondering, oh my goodness, did COVID get her? No, nope, I'm still here, alive and well, thank God. And I'm excited to be back and I'm hoping that this time around I can be very consistent. At least that is the plan, that's the goal, and we're going to stick to it. And I want to thank you so much for being patient. Thank you so much for sticking around and not unsubscribing. It will be worth it. And so since it has been such a long time, there are actually a number of updates that I want to let you know about. Now, sometime last year, last year I got an email from YouTube telling me that one of my videos had been reported. So I, I checked the email, being a bit concerned, like, what, which video, like, what happened with my video? So it turns out that a particular individual that was featured in the video, um, The Disappearance of Dylan Clark, if you haven't seen that video as yet, please go back and watch it um, so that you can follow this video because this is an update on that video. So a particular individual who was featured in that video reported it to YouTube indicating that I was somehow impeding on his or her. <laughs> I don't think there were any females featured in that video but impeding on his privacy um and youtubers indicating that perhaps i can either blur the image of that person that appeared in the video or remove that uh, image i actually was in the process of looking into doing so until youtube then followed up that email and was like hey you know, we checked out the video and there actually isn't anything wrong with it. So it's fine. You don't have to do anything to it. And you know, while at first I was a little bit perturbed, afterwards I actually kind of felt proud. I was like, what? <laughs> that makes me official. Me with my full videos on the channel and 10 subscribers. <laughs> 10 subscribers being reported i felt official i felt official but in that happening i recognized also that there were a lot of views re like that that happened within that very short space of time when the video was reported and then i started also getting emails from persons um pertain pertaining to that video so I figured, okay, something must have happened Why all of this is happening at the same time. And initially I thought, okay, maybe they found the remains of Dylan Clark, what's going on? And when I checked the emails, I was updated that the person who I and many believe to be responsible for the disappearance of Dylan Clark, that's the devil incarnate himself, Mr. Patrick Howell Jr. He was released from prison. He was released from prison. Now, in the last video, I said it to Nevis, do not release him. Lock him up and throw away the key. Mm, nope. Nope. He should not be around regular people. Regular people. No. No, 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 no. Oh, and stabbing up people, burying bodies, moving bodies, allegedly. Not normal. Mm -mm. Lock him away, throw away the key. Mm -mm, don't bring him back out. Don't bring him back out. For the sake of Nevis, do not bring him back out. They released him. Technically, he was not in prison for murder or anything like that. Um, after all, he got rid of the witness, right? So, and then they never found the body. So, two murders and no evidence against him, really. So, they actually had him locked up for gun possession, something like that. And so it appears as though he's, you know, he served his time and he was now released um, to walk amongst the civilized with his unworthy self. And yeah, released and guess what? Just as I anticipated, went and wreaked havoc in peaceful Nevis. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, yes, he did it. I don't know how long he was released for before all of this went down, but sometime last year, July, um, July 16th of 2021, a young man by the name of Travis Clack was sitting on a step, minding his own business, just chilling, enjoying the cool Caribbean breeze when allegedly Patrick approached and just started shooting at the, the young man. Now he ran away or attempted to run away, but he was shot several times and eventually succumbed to his injuries. After Patrick would have shot this man down in cold blood, he then proceeded to hijack or carjack a vehicle from a lady that was in the area and you know attempted to escape. And if that wasn't bad enough, it is alleged by witnesses that as he sped off in this stolen vehicle, he fired shots at another young man, but thankfully he missed. Now, apparently all of this went down in the presence of many witnesses. So really and truly, Patrick didn't have anywhere to go. I'm sure anyone would be able to identify him um, and call his name, you know, because he was a part of some high profile cases. And everyone knows who he is. That's, that is my assumption. But anyway, they were able to retrieve the vehicle eventually. They found it in some deserted area. And then the following day, the following day, Patrick uh, turned himself in. Now, now you may be thinking, well, you know, um, that's good that he actually, you know, turned himself in. Please. I feel like that was a survival tactic. Like, he knows that he wouldn't be able to survive on the streets at this point. And so he turned himself in with a family member. But then he changed his mind. Because the next day, Patrick escaped. I could just imagine the horror when Nevis heard he escaped. What do you mean he escaped? You just had him a few hours ago. Escape go where? How? How he escaped? But anyway, he escaped. But thankfully, the police were in hot pursuit and were able to recapture him and put him back where he belongs. And I hope this time you throw away the key. Throw it away. Flush it down the toilet. Get rid of it. Because this young man has no cause being around any civilized individual. I, something is not normal. It is not, he's not normal. He's not normal. <sighs> yeah, so anyway, they got him. They got him back, thankfully. Nevis can breathe a sigh of relief. And so, while he's back in prison, uh, things have been peaceful. But then comes October 22nd. October 22nd, the little island of Nevis was rattled by gunfire yet again. And this time, there was a double murder. And dead were 21-year-old Shaheen Farrell and 23-year-old Xavier Howell, the younger brother of Patrick Howell Jr. Now details are a bit sketchy pertaining to the this double murder but apparently while these young men were hanging by a popular beach bar in Nevis they were ambushed by a lone masked gunman who opened fire and Shaheem Farrell I think based on the autopsy report succumbed to his injuries one bullet to his neck while Xavier um, was killed um, by a single bullet to his head. So, you know, that was almost like an execution and it was purposeful. And I have my assumptions. I do believe that it was um, revenge. Uh, it was somebody avenging their loved one, perhaps. That's what I think. That's, that's just me.
And apparently, Xavier's father and Patrick's father feels the same way because he posted a, a plea on social media um, a few hours after the murder, the murders, basically asking Xavier's friends to not try to avenge his death and that he was not a gang member and he doesn't want um, anyone to try to honor him in that way, basically. And he further went on to say, you know, that he, in not so many words, um, that essentially his son was collateral damage for, for Patrick, unfortunately. He didn't come right out and say it, but he said, you know, if you know, you know, like you know why this happened. And yeah, we do. And it's unfortunate because if it is the fact that Xavier was not a part of that lifestyle, Shaheem unfortunately was just with the wrong person at the wrong time, at the wrong place and, um, you know, was collateral damage in this whole messy affair. It's sad that the actions of one man has caused so much hurt across so many families. But I do hope that now that he's put away, that it brings some, some level of consolation to the families that did not receive justice. The families of Zami Kailiga, the families of the family of Dylan Clark, who did not receive justice. And while it may not be that he's away for the crimes that he committed against your loved one, I hope that just the fact that he may not be released from prison ever again brings some some solace, some 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 closure in a sense. Well, uh, perhaps not for the family of Dylan Clark, because how do you really get closure with, without being able to even have a burial for your loved one? That that has to be very difficult. But you know, if I were the prosecutor. If I were the prosecutor, I would probably hang the death penalty over his head and be like, look, I'm going to be going after the death penalty. Uh, however, I would be willing to give you life if you let us know where the remains are of Dylan Clark. And so his family can have that peace of mind and be able to have a, a respectable um, burial and be able to say their final goodbye um, and bring that bring that chapter to a close for them so yeah that's what I would do but you know I don't even know if, if he would even care in fact I believe that the person or the persons responsible for Xavier's murder would have done so because they can't get to Patrick and so in their minds, they, they're going after the next best thing. They're going after um, someone who may cause him hurt and cause him pain. But I wonder if Patrick even feels anything for anybody. Like, I feel like he is void of emotions. I don't even think that this would have affected him at all. Because maybe he doesn't even have a relationship with his brother. Who would want to have a relationship with a family member that crazy? But anyway... I do hope that the prosecution hangs that over his head and that he brings, um, he, he finally brings that chapter to, to a close for those, fa for that family. Um, but that's pretty much it, um, for this video and the whole saga with Patrick Howell Jr. Thank goodness he's back in prison and that he more than likely will not see the light of day again, just as it's supposed to be. Um, there is something though that I forgot to mention earlier. Now I was speaking about the particular individual that um, reported my video. Um, well, I suppose I shouldn't identify that person because I really don't want the former commissioner to report me again. So I'm just going to leave that alone. But thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so already like share and comment and thank you again for sticking around until next time bye